Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we will be learning about great circle and drum lines. In the previous video, we learned that the great circle is the circle which cuts earth in two equal halves and whose center and radius are those of earth itself and we also discussed some properties of great circle like the uh, great circle cuts earth in two equal halves the plane of the circle passes through the center of the earth is the circle having the greatest area we can draw infinite great circles on the surface of earth and the shorter arc of great circle is the shortest distance between any two points now we will be talking about rumb lines a rumb line is a regularly curved line which cuts all the meridian at same angle this is earth when viewed from above north pole all these black lines over here are meridians and this curved line from point a to point b is the rumb line so all these angles must be equal unlike the great circle route it did not give the shortest distance over the earth between two points this is the great circle route and this would be the shortest distance between these two points and only one rum line can be drawn between any two points the most important point of rum line is that it is the line of constant direction this simply means that we will always get the same track direction when following a rum line track for example if track direction at a is 260 degrees and we kept on traveling in this direction then we would reach point b by following the rum line the next point is that a rum line is convex to the equator and concave to the nearer pole some examples of rum line are parallel of latitudes because parallel of latitude cuts the all the meridians at 90 degrees equator it is a special case as it's a great circle as well as rumb line and meridian as the cut angle is of 0 degrees in this figure you can see that rumb line is a curved line and great circle is almost a straight line but if we draw a rumb line on charts for example mercator projection the situation is reversed the rumb line would be the straight line and great circle would be curved this over here is the representation of rumb line and great circle on a mercator projection now consider the track left to right in northern hemisphere the rumb line track would be constant which is 090 degrees if the heading is in easterly direction the great circle starts with an initial direction of about 030 degrees then curves round to 090 degrees and finishes up on about 150 degrees in other words the track direction is increasing and if the heading is westerly the rum line track would be 270 degrees and the great circle track would start with initial heading of about 330 degrees then curves round up to 270 degrees and then finishes up at about 210 degrees so we can conclude that traveling westward the track direction is decreasing now we'll take a look at what happens in southern hemisphere in southern hemisphere consider the track left to right the rum line track would be again 090 degrees and the great circle track starts with an initial direction of about 150 degrees then curves round to 090 degrees and finishes up on about 030 degrees 
Here we can see the track direction is decreasing from 150 it went to 030 and if we would travel in westerly direction then the track direction would increase in southern hemisphere. This could be summarized in the simple diagram D I I D. So here this is the northern hemisphere this part is the northern hemisphere and this is southern hemisphere d stands for decreasing i increasing and increasing and decreasing so if we travel west in northern hemisphere northern hemisphere our track direction would decrease and if we travel east in northern hemisphere our great circle track direction would be increasing and opposite goes for southern hemisphere. If we travel west in southern hemisphere, then our track direction would be increasing. While if we go in easterly direction, our track direction would be decreasing. In the early days of air and maritime navigation, compass and navigation equipment were less capable and it was found easier to navigate along the rum line, which is the line of constant direction. But now we have modern computer based navigation systems which can direct aircraft along the great circle route and cope up with the constantly changing direction of great circle quite easily. Now we will be learning how to calculate great circle distances. The calculation of these great circle distances are limited to those where two points lie on the spatial great circle that is on same meridian, on meridian and anti-meridian or on the equator so first of all we'll start with same meridian same meridian and same hemisphere we will understand all these by taking examples let us assume coordinates of point a to be 51 degrees 37 minutes north and 0 degrees 12 minutes west and point B 6 degrees 48 minutes north and 0 degrees 12 minutes west from this we can see that they are on same meridian you should always draw figures to solve navigation questions so this is the equator this is point a and this is point b we know that one minute of latitude is equals to one nautical mile so we just need to find out how many minutes we have to travel to reach point a from point b which is this distance this can simply be calculated by subtracting latitudes of point b from latitude of point a so if we subtract 51 degrees 37 minutes and 6 degrees 48 minutes we would get 44 degrees 49 minutes this here is the difference between the latitude so we will say d lat our difference in latitude is 44 degrees 49 minutes now we also know that 1 degree is equals to 60 minutes what we have to find is how many minutes would be in 44 degrees so we would multiply 44 degrees by 60 which would be 2640 minutes now these are also left so we would add 49 minutes to this and our answer would be 2, 6, 8, 9 minutes. 
so we are covering 2689 minutes to travel from position a to position b so 2689 minutes would be equal to 2689 nautical mile this is our great circle distance in short what we did here is we calculated the difference in latitude and multiplied it by 60 to convert it into minutes from this we get a formula to calculate the great circle distance which is equals to difference in latitude d lat into 60 the second type is same meridian different hemisphere In this, the coordinates of point E are 59 degrees 47 minutes north and 30 degrees 30 minutes east. And the coordinates of point, let's suppose D, are 29 degrees 30 minutes south and 30 degrees 30 minutes east now in this case also we need to find out the change in latitude which would come out by adding 59 degrees 47 minutes north and 29 degrees 30 minutes south so the difference and latitude would be equal to 89 degrees 17 minutes and the great circle distance we would calculate by multiplying this d lat into 60 so 89 minutes 17 degrees into 60 would give us 53 Five seven minutes, which is equals to five three five seven nautical miles. The third case is if the point lie in the same hemisphere and on meridian and anti meridian. For example, if point A is sixty degrees north and thirty east, and point B is forty north. 150 west we will again be making the figure to find the great circle distance this is the equator and point a which is 60 north and 30 east this is point b 40 north 150 west in the previous video we learned that the great circle will cross the equator at an angle equal to the latitude of its vertices so this angle would be equal to the latitude of point B which is 40 degrees and this angle would be equal to the latitude of point A which is 60 degrees. We can see that angle 40, 60 and this angle are forming a linear pair whose sum is equal to 180 degrees. So we can find out this angle which would be equal to 180 minus 60 plus 40 which is equal to 80 degrees. So we have to travel 80 degrees to move from point A to B or vice versa. To find out the great circle distance we just need to convert this 80 degrees into minutes which we can do by multiplying 80 with 60 as 1 degree is equals to 60 minutes so 80 into 60 is equal to 4800 minutes which is equals to 4800 nautical mile because 1 minute arc of latitude is equals to 1 nautical mile so 4800 minute arc would be equal to 4800 nautical miles. The fourth case is if 
the points lie in different hemisphere and on meridian and anti meridian let us assume point a coordinates of point a to be 70 north 30 east and the coordinates of point b to be 40 south 150 east this angle would be equal to 70 degrees and this angle would be equal to 40 degrees again by using the linear pair rule we can find out these two angles so 180 minus 70 degrees would be equal to 110 degrees and this angle would be equal to 180 minus 40 degrees which is equals to 140 degrees if we take this route to travel from point a to b then we have to travel 110 plus 40 which is equals to 150 degrees and if we take this route then we need to cover 140 plus 70 which is equals to 210 degrees so the shorter route would be this one now we need to convert 150 degrees into minutes which we will do by multiplying it by 60 which is equal to 9 1000 nautical miles this is the great circle distance our last case is finding great circle distance at equator let us find out the circumference of earth at equator to find out the circumference at equator we need to travel 360 degrees we know 1 degree is equals to 60 minutes so to travel 360 degrees we need to travel 360 into 60 minutes which is equal to 21600 minutes and 1 minute of longitude is equals to 1 nautical mile but only at equator so our circumference of earth would be equal to 21600 nautical miles